favorite thing to do was to dance. And I would go out, in the, whether it was in the pasture, in the dirt driveway, in the yard, and I loved to dance, pretend I was a ballerina, twirl and spin, and sometimes I would sing as I was dancing, or I would be dancing to a song that was in my head. And that was such beautiful times for me, alone, dreaming, imagining what's out there, and just dancing and feeling freedom and joy as a little girl. Well, this year, I have hit some major milestones. And one of them was retiring 35 years in public education, which has been a joy. Um, and God showed me it was time for me to retire. Um, and it was difficult because this has been one of my favorite places to be, my favorite district. Fell in love with this community, this school district, the people. Um, and it, for, So it was really the best place for me to end my career because I ended, to me, in the best place. Um, a diamond in the rough. There's so much good here. Um, but I knew it was time because I take care of my mom. She's living with me now. I take care of my father-in-law, and I have beautiful grandchildren that I now get to play with more. Uh, two of them now have moved back behind us, and they're just 200 yards away from me. So almost every day I get to see them, and I never thought that would happen because we've always lived apart. So that has been a huge milestone for me. The hard part for that was... Um, I remember journaling, and I, Brenda, she gave me this beautiful, she had no idea at Christmas when she gave me this journal book um, how much precious that would be because I've used it during this time while making these very difficult decisions and journaling in there um, through this and at, you know, just kind of pouring my heart out. If you don't journal, that's something you ought to try. It's very, it's very good for the soul. But in there, I have one page that has, when I decided I was going to retire, I'd put my retirement letter in, I put, who am I? Because I thought, who am I after this? I've been an educator, a teacher for so long. I've been known as Miss Cook in the grocery store to so many students. Then I was known as the superintendent. Couldn't even go to church without people coming up to me during a fellowship time saying, oh, what about this? Or, oh, can you help my niece get a job at the school district? Or I've all, who I had become had been attached to me being an educator or my career. And you may find yourselves like that, where you find that you are, uh, your identity is almost attached to you being the mom. You're someone's mom. You're someone's grandmother. You're a wife. You're a homemaker. You're uh, a business leader. Whatever it is that you do, sometimes you may find your identities being attached to that. Um, and it's a very difficult thing when you realize that you allowed that to happen and you have to go back and say, God, who am I? Who am I? I that is what I did, but who am I in you? The other big milestone was that I turned 60 years old this year. I've never had a problem with birthdays. To me, they're just numbers. It's all a state of mind. This year was a little more difficult, and I couldn't figure out why, but I think it's because I was coming to these times of closure. What did not help was reading a blog uh, by this lady that was turning 60 also. I was trying to get some inspiration, and part of what she said was, turning 60 is difficult because it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not want to read her blog any longer, <laughs> but I did read it because I wanted to understand what she was saying, but I think there was so much truth in that because, you know, there's that country song about my next 30 years by Tim McGraw, and he's 30, and he's saying, my next 30 years, I'm going to do better and all that. Well, you know, I think there's something to be said for that. That first 30, you know, those of you that are in that, you're growing your families, you're finding your way in your career, you're trying to find your path. That second 30 years, it's like, okay, 
the waters are a little smoother, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of making it through, you're figuring it, figuring it out, um, and then, and you're starting to have those grandbabies, and things are coming, your closure of your career, so it's that last 30, it's, it is like the last 30 years, God willing, that I, if I live as long as my, the ladies in my family have, most of them have lived to be 90, I should have about 30 more years. Those go by really fast. So it's really made me stop and reflect. And that's why during this reflection and thinking over all that's happening for me right now and for you as you think about where you are in your season of life, I really thought about that little girl again. That little girl and how she has always been a part of my journey. And sometimes I didn't realize that she was still with me, even though I might not have realized it. Because I have still climb. I don't climb trees anymore. I did try the other day with my grandson, and I decided it wasn't a good idea. Um, so I let him climb. Um, but I've climbed many mountains, and I'm sure you've done that in your life too. And those mountains sometimes are hard, and sometimes we feel very alone. And sometimes we can feel God carrying us up that mountain. I know that in my life I've sat at the top of those mountains, and sometimes it's been a celebration. Sometimes I've fallen to my knees and cried and thank God that that part was over. Because we all go through those very difficult times, but we keep climbing, we keep going, we keep finding the tenacity to keep doing what we know God's calling us to do. I've dreamed very big dreams, just like I did when I sat on that fence post. I've achieved some of them. God has graced me and, 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 and provided for me to do more than I really ever imagined I could. As a quiet, shy, little country girl from a poor family, to have been able to do all that I've been able to do and hopefully touch many lives, uh, children's lives, uh, in the process, I'm very grateful for that. But that was only with God's grace because I wasn't really equipped to do that, but he equipped me. I have, um, you know, during the dreams, I've been told no by God. I've been told wait. Uh, and sometimes those times are hard, aren't they? Because we want it now or we think we know what's best. One example I have is that... Um, Probably about, it was 15 years ago, there was a, uh, we lived here in the area, we lived in Rockport, and I was driving an hour and a half from Rockport back over to another school district, and a, I wanted to get closer. I put my name in and, and actually interviewed here at Aransas Pass ISD for a curriculum director's job, and I didn't get it. And so I had to find another district and drive. And I kept thinking, but God, why? They're right in my back yard, and I really think I need to be here. I thought that was what was best. But he said, no, not right now. And little did I know, just 10 years later, that he would bring me back here to be the superintendent in Aransas Pass. So don't ever give up on your dreams, because sometimes God just says, wait a minute. Sometimes he says, it's not now, or that's not what's best for you. But God always knows what's best for us. And I have so many examples in my life, and I'm sure you have them in yours if you just stop and reflect of how you can see God's hands in what, is going, what you're going through or what you, the disappointments you may have, uh, the suffering that we've gone through. There's always a purpose and reason for it, and we just sometimes have to wait to see what it is. And my final thing was to, I've tried to not live with regrets and take time to dance. And I've thought through my life, that little girl that was still out there dancing, how much I love music and dance, and that's the most therapeutic thing for me. And I dance with my grandchildren. I dance with my, I danced with my children when they were young, swinging them around, swirling them, te teaching them. Just the other day, a couple of weeks ago, they were having a camp out in the woods. I went out there to check on them, and my, they were playing some music, and my grandson and I danced there in the woods under the, the moonlight. 
Uh, and I thought, what a great memory for me, but hopefully for him also, just to be together and embrace those moments, have fun and not be fearful, you know, dance like no one's watching. Um, uh, those of you that have been, have worked with me, uh, that are in the room, you know that about me, that I like to dance, because I have you join me many times in dancing at convocation. Because we did not have one convocation that there was not some kind of loud music and lots of movement. Right, girls? <laughs> yes. So they know that. I still like to dance by myself. I don't do it in the driveway or outside because they probably would take me away. But I do cover the blinds, and when my husband's not there, I love to turn up the music and just dance. And just, I've danced many times cooking or whatever, because there's something freeing about that, to just dance and let yourself feel that joy and that peace and that excitement. So as I've reflected about that little girl, and I've reflected over my first 60 years and prepare for my next 30 plus whatever God willing allows, I know that the strength from that little girl that is still within me is from knowing who she is, from knowing who I am, and for know and knowing who you are, we are. And I want to share some things from God's word. I don't have all, I'm not going to get all the scriptures and everything, but if you want to know the scriptures where they're found, I can send those to you. It might be a good exercise for you to look them up. But in Christ, we, God's word tells us, and some of you may need to really hear these, we are loved, we are important, we are lovely, we are redeemed, we are strong, sometimes we don't feel like it, but we are, we are precious in his sight, we are chosen, we are empowered, cared for, special, unique, not alone, protected, you are forgiven. Ladies, as we stand on those truths and those promises, we can look at our future with anticipation and peace knowing whatever you may be going through right now, whatever is ahead, we are loved. And you and I are the precious daughters of an almighty king. I pray that you find yourself overcome with joy in your journey and find yourself wanting to dance. I love you all. Thank you for having me here tonight.